Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how to manipulate blobs and squiggles using their Bezier points. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll press code to go find our libraries. And down at the bottom, or near the bottom, is paths, and this part of the pizzazz, paths, like that. I was just working on the code or to make a path here. Um, we can hit reset. So there's a series of, of different uh, shapes, and you're welcome to message us on zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord if you have any cool paths or for squiggles as well. And how you get the code for that is you hit code, and there's the code for that. And if, if we start drawing with these things, then we could get the code for that, and that's the code for that. And then we would paste this code into a blob, and that's what it would end up looking like. All right, so how do we use these things? Well, you saw that you could drag, you can drag them. If you click off, they're gone. If they click on, they're there. These are called Bezier handles, and they'll affect the curves. So these ones, when they're purple, work like a mirror. So we call them mirror. That's the mirror. If you double click, then they work straight. So you see how it, it just keeps it straight, but this side can go as long as it wants, and so can that. So they're independent on the sides. If you double click again, then they go yellow, and each one works independently. And that allows for something like that. If you double click again, they go away, and then you have a point there. So you can double click them all, boop, like that, and make a rectangle or something like that. If you double click again, it comes back to your mirror. Isn't that elegant? Okay. You can also click on the path, like that, to add another one. Shroom, shroom, shroom. And um, double click through those. You can also shift click to remove it. Um, you can shift click a bunch of them. And there you go. You can't shift click the last one though. So, um, and you can click on it to add one. Boop, boop. All right. Um, that started off. If we hit reset, starts off almost like a circle. It's not actually a circle. It's just these happen to be 50 and 50 or 100, 100 or something like that. Um, if you want, when you make the blob with code, you can say points colon quote circle and then it will approximate a circle better points colon rectangle I think there's a few other diamond or something like that um, but anyway you can you can make your own shapes hit code copy that code uh, the code you can also shift in general you don't want to pick something up that doesn't do anything so if you think that's going to move it, it doesn't really um, how, how it works is a blob or a squiggle. A squiggle has a bounds set like it is right at the beginning um, and won't change the bounds after that. So you have to be a little bit careful. We've got this thing called approximate bounds and we may make that default. I think we probably will. So perhaps by the time you're watching this, it's going to uh, call the approximate bounds as you move things around like that and it will make the bounds kind of follow it. But the registration point will still stay. So, anyhow, uh, if, do you want to see the approximate bounds? Let's see how we get out there. It's one of these things. And I can look at it over in the Zim site. And if we go under the examples, under collections, the approximate bounds. So all of the path stuff was introduced in Zim Neo, right down here, Pizzazz 4, and animating along paths, and all that was Zim Neo based so that's the Zim Neo's mini site. In Zim 10, we have a hit test path got brought in, and you see how we've got those dots around there? So that's kind of neat, and that will make it so that's hitting the path. And that's pro approximately what we're doing with <laughs> approximate paths. <laughs> is um, we're finding, we're, we put a bunch of dots around the path and then we draw a rectangle around the extremes of the dots. 
So that's that one. Where was that? Oh, I think it was under Zim Beads, which is all also part of Zim 10 things there. So here we are, instead of putting dots around the path, we're putting items around the path. And we're also animating on that path and making them go smaller. By default, uh, there's a way to do it in the animate. Make them smaller and fainter, where they're alphaed out in the distance, they get bigger out here. They would also do depth shifting, so as they get smaller, they would change their depth and their overlap in this. Some more being along the path. So there, there you can see the path, but all of these beads are being placed around in there. Isn't that cool? Uh, but we are looking for this one. Uh, yeah. So there's approximate bounds working. So that's not built into the squiggle yet automatically, but we probably should put it in there. It seems to work pretty well and pretty fast, so why not? It's just that every time you go to move a squiggle, it would be calculating its bounds with a bunch of extra points. And it's sort of like, you know, we don't want that to happen automatically. But when it could happen is at the beginning. So if you passed in a bunch of points right now, it just takes the default blob. So probably your bounds are going to be this square, even if your shape looks different. So what we could do is do the approximate bounds as it starts just once, and then you would have to update the approximate bounds manually if you wanted to, because normally you don't really care too much. Or perhaps it's on mouse up, it could read approximate bounds, that might work. So if you move like that, now it would have the bounds like that, and that would help with, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe hit test, but we've already got the, the hit, test, um, hit test path is what it's called and that that will handle it doesn't need you don't need to change the bounds for that anyway blah bitty blah bitty blah happy exploring that was uh, some exploring out there we were primarily in this one wanting to show you how to move these things i can't remember did i show you how to hold down the control key so if you call, hold down oops the control key then we can move more than once so then they go white like that and now we're moving all three uh, that also works um, on squiggles as well, but it also works on these little guys. So you can hold down the control keys there and operate multiple ones at once. You can't hold down the control key on an opposite side. So these two are opposite directions, and it just doesn't make sense to, to, to do that. Or, or we could go to, I can't remember which one. So you're left with uh, control keys only on ones that are, on, I'm not holding the control now, on, on the same side like that. Um, so we showed you the shift, like adding things to it. We can click on it to add. We should probably change the color of that because that's no longer a mirror. Oh, and it seems to po it popped into a mirror right away, didn't it? So yeah, it might be a touch of a glitch there, um, but not the end of the world. So if you didn't want the mirror anymore. Yeah, so when we intervene there with another one, that little gets a little shorter. We made it match, which is good. Um, it didn't used to match. It used to just keep this exactly the same and you would get a bump and you would have to deal with it. Um, but we did make it match. It's just we probably should change the control type of the neighbors. So you see, watch what happens when I, when I, hear, when I pick this up, that's going to get longer. Like that. So it popped back to the mirror. Um, when we want to deal with something like that, we go here, we type in requests or bugs. It's probably a bug, I guess. And go to the bugs and say, um, when adding a point to a blob or squiggle, um, the adjacent, adjacent, adjacent control points should be converted to, probably convert them to, what would that be? That would be straight. Yeah, I think so. Makes the most sense. Okay, uh, there's that. And anything else? Um, 
we were just doing some work. Do you want to see? We were just doing some work with this track. So if I open this up in a browser, uh, here's a track, and you can set the, you can set a, a motion controller. This is a motion controller. You can set a motion controller so that the object you're controlling stays within bounds. But we had a complaint or a concern that basically what, what was happening is the object's registration point stays in bounds, but the edge of the object goes outside the bounds. So what we've done is we made a track within a track, and now the registration point doesn't go outside of the inner track, and as you can see, it stays within these bounds here. So um, we had also another request that um, that we have a way to do what's the word for it? Uh, kind of like copying here. So put a picture in here, and then we can move something along to make uh, to make it match the picture. So uh, whatever that picture may be, and and so. Uh, that can be really done. That can be done really easily. We don't have to do it here, but we we'd actually thought of that already and, and planned on putting something in almost like a tracing system here. Uh, it's not a bad idea, but watch uh, what we can do. If we go into here, here we are. Make that's the original track. So what we would have done is just copied the original track, or if it were a picture, indeed, um, those are the the points. So imagine that we had the points here, like so. And then we want this to be, normally it, we can interact with it. We've set the, the track to be interactive false. So now we've got basically the same points sitting on top and they're red. And we added a button right here called record. And when we tap the button, we say path, that's the one we're copying here, path.record points true. So we go like this and open up in a browser, refresh here. Oh, I forgot to change the alpha. Alpha one. And refresh here. So now the red path is on there. Or you can imagine if there were a picture of a track, we, we well, if there were a picture of a track, we stop start with an empty blob. But um, what we do is just move these things into place like that. And here, here's us sort of uh, making the inner track now. And if we if we like that inner track, we go record, and then we grab these guys. Copy that. And we paste them into the second path. Paste. Okay, so uh, now when we refresh, or we can take off the interactive or what have you, but now when we refresh, refresh, we've got the path in, in inside there. Okay, so that's all it takes to record a, a tracing in a sense. It took two seconds to make that button record when, when we want, or you could just make a stage mouse down event, and whenever you press on the stage or something, it, it does a record. Oh, that wouldn't be very convenient, would it? <laughs> Every time you're moving the, the blob or squiggle it goes around, it would uh, start recording for you. If you don't put the true in there, it just writes to the console. So if you put the true in there, then it pops up that extra window for us. All right, so that's a bunch of info on how to manipulate blobs. It's really easy to animate these things, or pretty easy to animate these things. We've got lots of examples of us animating blob points, moving blob points around. There might even be other, check for explorers or look for videos, bubbling videos maybe on animating the blobs. There's some good examples on the Zim site for that. animating blobs. Let's see. Where do we have one? This is one right here. So these are blobs that are animating 
and we're animating to sound. This is animating to sound. Blobs are not. The blobs are just sort of big, sort of rectangular blobish things, and we're rotating the points on it. You can also do shape tweens with blobs to animate from one shape to another. There. There's definitely more to blobs and squiggles, like uh, animating along paths and stuff. There's a whole the whole series of Zimneo, but this explorer was primarily uh, Zimneo. Where is Zimneo these days? It's under the NFTs. There. Oh, that's beads. Uh, up here, yeah, there. So we've done videos on that. There's lots and lots that we can do with blobs in terms of animating along them and stuff. But I was wanting to just show how to manipulate the blobs themselves, okay? and uh, animating the blob points. There's some other, this one animates blob points water. It's very similar, it's just sort of wiggling that stuff. Um, there's definitely some in here that are different and like one, oh, we did Bolero. That's right here. I really like this. So this is going off to an NFT and why don't we listen to the sound? I don't hear sound at the moment. Oh, here it comes. Do you hear that? <laughs> full screen. <laughs> and then here's the Bezier's. So those beziers have been scaled, the blobs have been scaled, and what we're doing is we're actually animating the scale of the bezier is one way to um, keep the curve there. Because if you animate the whole point, or the whole control bigger, then it keeps it smooth. So when it's smaller, it's sharper. Um, because if you, kept the, if you kept the bezier sticks the same length, um, and they were really, let's see, how to, how to describe, if the blob weren't bigger, then you would end up overcompensating or undercompensating e either way. But by animating the scale of the point, you always get a nice smooth line. It stays in sort of discovered. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense to you. Um, anyway, you have to explore yourself. And we're also wiggling the rotation. Put it in a control to do the speed as well. 